Today, I'm going to present our work on analyzing network trouble tickets to improve network management. There were two motivations behind this effort. First, when a failure occurs, the focus is on fixing it quickly and moving on to the next one without understanding the big picture of failure trends. Thus, we want to analyze these network trouble tickets to uncover big problem trends. Second, we want to learn from our mistakes to improve network management. This is a joint work with Navendu from Microsoft Research and my advisor, Christina, from Purdue. Let me first show you Um, let me first show you how network troubleshooting is done today. Our focus is on data center environments comprising thousands of routers and switches. In such an environment, consider two devices connected by a link. When this link goes down, an alert is logged in a network monitoring system. This, in turn, triggers an alarm to an operator console. These operators maintain their progress during debugging in network trouble tickets. Think of these tickets really as diaries written by network operators during troubleshooting. Our goal is to analyze these diaries to improve network management. Towards this goal, we want to infer three key features from a given ticket. Problems, activities, and actions. First, what problems were observed? Did the device get stuck in a reboot loop, or did it fail? Second, what debugging was done? Did the operator check for any recent configuration changes? Or did they verify BGP routes in the routing table? And finally, what was the fix to mitigate the problem? Did they replace the line card or the entire device itself? Given a ticket, we want to infer these three key features, problems, activities, and actions. Using these as building blocks, we want to answer higher order questions. Our first question concerns redundancy. Why is it ineffective? Was it due to misconfigurations? Or was it humans making mistakes? Our second question is, what are the components that fail in routers and switches? Is it software, or is it hardware? And finally, are new devices more reliable? While newer generation devices give you a higher capacity and are feature rich, do they also offer a higher reliability? In the later part of my talk, I will show you how our system NetSieve answers these questions. But before that, let me show you what information a ticket contains to make this possible. Tickets comprise two parts, structured fields and freeform text. Look at the example. The top part of the slide shows you structured fields, such as ticket title, problem type, and priority, and so on. The bottom part of the slide is showing you freeform text that contains a variety of natural language elements, such as IM conversations, email exchanges between operators, and device debug logs. Our goal is to use this information to extract the key features that I talked about, problems, activities, and actions. Now, what makes this problem fundamentally hard are two key challenges. First, structured fields are often coarse-grained, or inaccurate and incomplete. In a large measurement study that we conducted, we found this to be the case in 69% to 75% of the tickets. Hence, we cannot use these structured fields for inference. The other part is freeform text, which contains a variety of elements, such as IM conversations and email messages. As you expect, these are written in natural language. They come with typos, ambiguities, and grammatical errors. They also contain domain-specific terms, which may not even exist in the dictionary. Therefore, interpreting this freeform text is difficult. Overall, structured fields cannot be used for inference 
due to its high inaccuracy. And if we do use them, we risk making the wrong decision. Hence, our focus is on using this freeform text to infer problems, activities, and actions. Towards this goal, we make three contributions. First, we did a large-scale study on over 10,000 tickets to analyze the challenges in mining these trouble tickets. Our main results are that structured fields are highly inaccurate and cannot be used for problem inference. The, this, the freeform text makes it challenging to interpret for, for further interpretation and problem inference. Towards these challenges, we have built our system NetSieve that takes a semantic-based approach to extract three features. What problems were observed? Did the operator notice a firewall failure? Second, what debugging steps were carried out? Did they notice a change in the configuration file recently? And finally, what fix was applied to mitigate the problem? Did they replace the hard disk? We have evaluated NetSieve on a large ticket data set, and overall, our system achieves a reasonable accuracy. Till now, I've described our problem of analyzing network trouble tickets. Next, I will show you why strawman approaches are ineffective in analyzing freeform text. Next, I'll show you how our system NetSieve addresses these challenges. Finally, I will show you our evaluation results and conclude. Remember, our goal is given a ticket, we want to extract three key features, problems, activities, and actions. Recall from my previous discussion that Freeform text consists of a variety of elements, such as IM conversations, emails, device debug logs, and so on. The first strawman is to use natural language processing techniques. But note that these techniques work only on well-written text, such as news articles. The second strawman is to select a set of keywords, but it ignores context. For instance, consider the sentence in red. If you select cable as a keyword, you miss the fact that the cable has been replaced. Consider the sentence in blue. It is not very clear if the ticket is in fact due to maintenance. The third strawman is to cluster tickets based on selecting keywords. However, note that it takes significant time and effort to build this keyword list for tens of thousands of tickets. Now, I will show you how our system NetSieve addresses these challenges. NetSieve takes a semantic-based approach towards this problem to infer problems, activities, and actions. The system operates in two phases. First, we want to build a knowledge base that contains phrases that are important in the current domain, which in our case is the networking domain, and then use this knowledge base to extract the three key features from a given ticket. Let me first give you a bird's eye view of how the knowledge building phase works, and then I will discuss each step in detail. Think of knowledge base really as a technical dictionary. Given a ticket, you would look up each word, each phrase, inside the technical dictionary to understand its semantic or meaning. Therefore, our goal then is to first build this knowledge base or the technical dictionary and then use it to extract problems, activities, and actions from a given ticket. To achieve this, we use three steps. First, we find frequently occurring phrases from a given set of tickets. The intuition is to find text that operators frequently use to describe problems across a large number of tickets, such as the example shown here. For instance, power supply unit is faulty, or the access router is inoperative. Next, in the second stage, we want to determine which of these phrases are important in the current networking domain. Therefore, with the exception of the last sentence, everything gets marked as important because they can be used for problem inference. In step three, we are interested in attaching a semantic to each of these domain-specific phrases to understand what they really mean. NetSieve, using an ontology model, attaches entity to the power supply unit and state to the, for to, to the phrase faulty. Let me summarize. First, we find frequently occurring phrases. Then, we extract what are the important phrases in the current domain. And finally, we attach a semantic to each of these phrases. Now, 
Let me discuss each step in detail. Our first step is to extract frequently occurring text. The intuition is to find text that is frequently repeated by operators across a large number of tickets to describe problems. This problem is equivalent to extracting all possible n-grams from the given input, where an n-gram is a contiguous sequence of n words. When we applied standard techniques for n-gram extraction from natural language processing, we found several challenges. First, they were computationally expensive. Second, these tools have numerous thresholds, and fine-tuning them is hard. And third, not all n-grams are useful, as some of them are noise. Our key idea to address this challenge is to trade completeness for scalability. What do I mean by this? Well, we apply a data compression algorithm to extract the set of repeated phrases. The intuition is that data compression algorithms are very good at detecting redundancy in the given input text. Specifically, we apply the compression algorithm LZW to the given input and then extract the dictionary that it constructs, which contains all these repeated phrases. However, this dictionary does not contain the frequencies, and therefore we use a second step to compute this frequency. At the end of the stage, we get a list of repeated phrases along with their frequencies. In step two, we are interested in finding out which of these phrases are important. However, there are two key challenges. How do you filter meaningful phrases from the noisy ones? Of course, you can leverage the help from a domain expert, but it takes significant time and effort to label these phrases. To address this challenge, our key idea is to apply a pipeline of linguistic filters to the input and then rank the remaining phrases by using information theoretic measures. Consider the example shown on the right. The first three phrases are tagged important at the end of the stage, whereas the last three are noise because they are not technical words and they are not useful in doing problem inference. Note that by using these filters, we were able to significantly reduce noise by several orders of magnitude. Starting from 19 million phrases, we got to about roughly 5,000 important phrases. We give this small set of important phrases due to a domain expert for further labeling. Recall that in step one, we found the frequently occurring text. In step two, we found out which of these phrases are important. Now we are interested in attaching a meaning to each of these domain-specific phrases. However, how do you precisely define the meaning of a domain-specific phrase? Consider the example shown on right. <coughs> What is replace? What is line card? Given these two words, how do you link them up together? In order to address this challenge, NetSieve adopts ontology modeling. Similar to object-oriented programming, NetSieve, as part of its ontology model, defines a set of classes that can be used to tag each of the domain-specific phrase with an associated class label. The intuition is that given such an ontology model, a domain expert can now tag the input with associated class labels. To give you an idea, let me discuss three such classes from our ontology model, entity, action, and conditions. Think of entities really as nouns. For instance, flash memory or core router. Think of action as a verb. For instance, reboot or replace. Example, core router can be rebooted. Therefore, reboot is an action. And finally, think of conditions as adjectives. For instance, hung state or a bit error. Now, a domain expert given such a model will now be able to tag the input as follows. Replace can be tagged with the class label of action occurring on an entity called a line card. Let me summarize. First, we extracted frequently occurring phrases. Then we found which of these phrases are important. And then finally, we attached a meaning to each of these phrases. At the end of the stage, we have a list of domain-specific phrases along with their semantic. Let me put all of this together and show you how NetSieve analyzes its given input. Consider the example sentence shown on the slide. 
In the first step, netsieve tokenizes this sentence into this input into various sentences. Using its knowledge base, netsieve now finds all the domain specific phrases inside the given input. And using the ontology model in step three, it labels each domain specific phrase with its associated class label. For instance, device gets tagged as a replaceable entity. And as you expect, hung state is a problematic condition and hence it is labeled problem condition. Similarly, for the second sentence, and, and in the third one, power supply unit, again, as you expect, is a replaceable entity. And then replaced is a physical action. Now let me show you how NetSieve performs problem inference to extract three key features, problems, activities, and actions. Taking cues from the English grammar, we have defined a set of rules to do this inference. The intuition is that a rule such as entity precedes or succeeds a problem condition can be used to extract the problems observed in a given ticket. Let me revisit the example from the previous slide. Recall that NetSieve parsed the input, tokenized it, marked all the domain specific phrases, and then tagged each one with their associated class label. Now, using the rule for problems, NetSieve is able to infer that the problem is a device in a hung state power supply unit is faulty. Similarly for activities and actions. Now that we have seen how NetSieve works, let me show you the evaluation results. Our two main goals were to evaluate accuracy and usability. For the former, we use percentage accuracy and F-score. For the latter, we compare the time to read a ticket manually versus the inference output. Our data set consisted of over 10,000 tickets. And as ground truth, we have labeled roughly, uh, we have used roughly 1,000 tickets labeled by a domain expert as ground truth. We compare expert labeled problems and actions with NetSieve inference output. Let me show you the accuracy results. The top graph is for problems. The bottom graph is for actions. The x-axis shows you the category to which each ticket belongs to. The y-axis shows you the percentage accuracy. Higher numbers are better. Notice that in most cases, NetSieve is able to accurately infer both problems and actions with a perfect accuracy of 100%. Overall, our system achieves a reasonable accuracy. Now, let me show you how we applied NetSieve in the real world. Remember the three questions that I posed at the beginning of my talk? Our first question was concerning redundancy. Why is it ineffective? The common view is that it could be because of misconfigurations. By applying NetSieve on the input set of tickets, we found three main causes. Faulty cables between primary and secondary, software version mismatch, and misconfigurations. The idea is that this list can now be used to proactively test for redundancy. Our second question was, what are the components that fail in routers and switches? Using NetSieve, our findings indicate that line card failures, defective memory, and supervisor engine are the three most failing components. And finally, are new devices more reliable? The intuition is that newer generation devices give you a higher capacity and are feature rich, but do they also offer higher reliability? Using NetSieve, we found two surprising findings. First, a new generation access router was found to be only half as reliable as its predecessor due to both hardware and software problems. Second, Software bugs dominated failures in a type of load balancer, which were mistaken to be hardware bugs for more than a year. Overall, NetSieve was very promising in answering these important questions. Let me summarize what I have presented in our talk today. Recall that our goal was to analyze the natural text inside trouble tickets to infer useful information for improving network management. 
Towards this goal, we have built NetSieve that takes a semantic-based approach. Specifically, our system uses natural language processing, knowledge discovery, and ontology modeling in a novel way to extract three key features from a given ticket, problems, activities, and actions. We have evaluated NetSieve on a large ticket data set, and overall, our results are encouraging. Taking a step back, we're scratching the surface. Our aim is to motivate the research community to work on these unexplored yet important data sets. Of course, there's a lot more work to be done. For instance, how do you build an ontology model automatically? Can we improve accuracy using expert feedback? With that, I'd like to conclude my talk, and I'd be happy to take questions. We have a demo set up tomorrow evening. I encourage you to visit it. Thank you very much. Yen Chen from Northwestern University. Uh, very interesting work, Rahul. Um, I'm curious like, whether you have thought about uh, applying the techniques in other domains. For example, you know, if you have security logs from intrusion detection system or firewalls, um, can you apply this uh, to analyze them as well? Sure. So the question is, can NetSieve be applied in a different domain? So the NetSieve has uh, three main steps in actually how it analyzes the given input. First, it finds repeated phrase patterns, then it finds important phrases, and then attaches a semantic to it. These techniques are general enough to be applied to a different domain, and we did apply NetSieve in other domains. However, I would like to, in all honesty, I would like to perform a more thorough evaluation before I claim a broader applicability. Okay, and one last question. I, do you plan to put your system available? Like um, release? That's an interesting question. So the question is, can an, uh, will we release the source code of NetSeed? So uh, I did this work as part of, an, of my internship at Microsoft Research, and they own the IP for it. Hi, um, Ahmed from UIC. So first of all, great work, nice presentation. So quick question. So uh, did you perform an analysis to figure out like, whether two errors are related to each other, like solution of one error leading to another error, which are related? OK. So the question is, did we perform any kind of a correlation between the errors that are happening, in fact? So uh, if, if you. If you recall the use cases that I was discussing, so one of the key findings there was why network redundancy is ineffective. So what we did in order to you know, do the like, per per perform the analysis was first find out what tickets were concerning uh, you know, redundancy fa fa failures, in fact. Once we had this candidate set of tickets, we started analyzing the problem inference output of NetSieve. So what we found was essentially this is sort of a correlation analysis that we did, and I agree it's only one part of the entire work, where we found faulty cables were actually responsible for causing redundancy to fail in most cases. So, yes, sure. uh, hi, Abhishek Sharma from NEC Labs. Hi. I think part of my question you already answered, but I was trying to understand how crucial is the domain expert to this, because typically in data mining, what people do is that they'll look for some frequent patterns, then do some association rules. Right. So some of this seems to, so did you try to compare this where you took out the domain expert and maybe even just, just did some association mining and then tried to do it? That's an excellent question. So the question is, uh, did we use other data mining based techniques to you know, compare NetSieve's output, in fact? So, um, we have explored other standard techniques in the domain, for instance, frequent item set mining. However, um, we wanted to take a different route towards this problem, which is basically a semi-supervised domain-specific approach, where we really wanted to build some kind of a knowledge base that can be used for problem inference. And this is a problem in most unsupervised techniques, where, for instance, in uh, consider the Stroman approaches that I was discussing, in fact. So there we discussed some approaches based on a set of keywords. The problem with using such general 
you know, like approaches that have a general applicability is that it, it is hard to make any sense out of the output, which is what we wanted to solve by building a domain-specific system. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Uh, Ravinder from UIUC. Hi. Uh, great talk. Uh, a big problem with natural language processing uh, work uh, that I've seen earlier seems to be this problem of negation with, you know, the, this cable was not found to be faulty and X, XYZ was done. Uh, you have very high accuracy. I was wondering if that was not a big issue in this particular domain or? We, okay. So the question is, how, how much did negation actually affect us in the NetSieve accuracy analysis? Okay. So um, taking a step back, there are three key limitations of our system, which are discussed more in detail in the paper. So NetSieve relies on certain natural language processing techniques and therefore is subject to certain limitations that they have. For instance, it cannot handle complex negations. It cannot handle anaphoras. For instance, if a device such as a router is being referred to as this, so someone says the router has been replaced, and after a thousand lines or something, if they say that this device has not been replaced or the replacement did not go through, then NITC fails there. And third, truth conditions. We found cases where an operator was actually saying, please replace the router once you have more routers in stock. Right. It was not really clear if the ticket uh, you know, actually handled the situation or not. We do handle simple negations, which we describe in the paper, but complex negations, yes, this is one problem that needs to be addressed. Thank you for the question. Thank you very much.